you have not visited Medan, if you haven't tasted durian of UCOK, that is the tagline of the famous durian store in the capital of North Sumatra. Even after purchasing online, people from out of town, who have gone to Medan for conferences or business, including President Joko, Jokowi, Widodo, have the urge to personally visit the store located on JL. KH Wahad Hasayam. The durian was mostly supplied from areas surrounding Medan, especially Sadikalang. Therefore, the presence of a toll road connecting Medan and Binjai has helped business. Now the durian supply can arrive about two hours earlier than before the toll road was opened, said store owners Anal, UCOK, Aberdeen Chaniago in a testimonial video. The Medan Binjai Toll Road is just a small section of the Trans Sumatra Toll Road that is to stretch from Arch A in the north to Lampung in the south. The total length of the toll road is to be 2,048 km. It is to be divided into four main corridors Lampung Palembang, 358 km, Palembang Pekanbaru, 610 km, Pekanbaru Medan, 548 km, and Medan Bandar Aceh, 460 km. There are also to be three priority corridors consisting of Palembang Bengkulu, 303 km, Pekanbaru Padang, 242 km, and Medan Sibolga, 175 km. In total, the Trans Sumatra Highway is to cost about RP 476 trillion, $33.28 billion. The Trans Sumatra is expected to be ready for drivers by 2014, Hutama Karia President Director Bintang Perboo told journalists in Medan on Wednesday. The state-owned enterprise was appointed to do the work by Presidential Decree No. 117-2015 on the National Strategic Program. On Friday, Jokowi inaugurated the RP 16.8 trillion, 1.18 billion dollars, 140.9 kilometers Bakoheni Terbungi Basar section of the Trans Sumatra Highway in Lampung Province. He had already officiated the opening of the 8.9 kilometers section 1 connecting Bakoheni to a nearby port and the 5.65 kilometers section 5 connecting Lemetang and Kotabaru on Jan. 21 travelers are expected to be able to use the toll roads for this year's IDUL Fitri Exodus, which is to take place near the end of May. To drive from Bakoheni Port to Palembang, South Sumatra, a distance of about 350 kilometers, would take just 5 to 6 hours. Previously, travelers needed to spend at least 12 hours, said Bintang. Right now, Hutama Karia is still preparing for the operation of the 2.7 km Helvetia Maralin subsection, which is part of the Medan Binjai section. In general, each kilometre of the Trans Sumatra Toll Road costs the state enterprise RP 172 billion, compared to the Trans Java, which only costs RP 100 billion per kilometre, because of differences in terrain. Since its appointment as the developer of the Trans Sumatra, Hutama Karia has had a positive performance. Bintang explained that in 2014, the state-owned enterprise recorded revenues of RP 5.72 trillion. They increased to RP 6.32 trillion the next year and to RP 8.82 trillion in 2016. In 2017, revenues jumped to RP 18.09 trillion and last year the company recorded RP 26.54 trillion in revenues. For this year, Bintang said, the company projected revenues of RP 34.32 trillion. Hutama Carrier's net profits increased slightly from RP 140 billion in 2014 to RP 250 billion in 2015. In 2016 the firm booked RP 300 billion in net profits. The figure jumps to RP 1.07 trillion in 2017 and RP 2.21 trillion in 2018. This year, its net profits are projected to be RP 2.2 trillion because of loan interest expenses. 
Bramantio Estigioso, the Finance Ministry's Director of State Finance Risk Management, said that based on studies, the Trans-Sumatra Toll Road would make good macroeconomic impacts. Those studies show that there will be an increase in manpower, output and revenues for each regional administration, he said. Arif Budamanta, deputy chairman of the National Economy and Industry Committee, said the Trans-Sumatra would bring opportunities for Indonesia to expand its exports to Asia and Europe, thanks to the Asian Connectivity Network and China's One Belt One Road initiative. We have always suffered from a trade deficit with China. This Trans-Sumatra is our opportunity to narrow the deficit. We would have access to reach Southeast Asian Peninsula and would be able to have access to 65 countries in Asia and Europe that altogether have a population of 4.5 billion and 40% of the global gross domestic product GDP, he said. Despite the rosy picture, Hutama Korea is also facing tough challenges, especially in land acquisition. There were several ongoing disputes related to land ownership and opposition from villages who are being forced off their land by the toll road construction. About 40% of the land, needed for construction, has not yet been acquired, Bintang said. However, he said he believed the state-owned enterprise would meet the 2024 deadline set by President Jokowi. With that same optimism, business people like Chaniago say they see nothing to worry about. With the toll road, my Jurian can arrive on time and I don't have to worry if they would rot if the drivers get stuck in traffic jams, he said. The Jakarta Post was among the media invited by P.T. Hutama Karia to visit the Medan Marelam Binjai toll road.